In Pat Ward-Williams' 1982 multimedia piece, Accused Blowtorch Padlock, and Carrie Mae Weems' 2008 short film, Constructing History, they use the imagery and metaphor of a window to emphasize the implicated viewer's role in actively witnessing truth. In these works, the window provides a visual tool for a critical gaze and awakened consciousness to the injustices of the law and the myths of canonized knowledge. Here, Williams reappropriates a photograph from a 1937 Life magazine article of a black man chained to a tree prior to being lynched. Looking into the window frame, you see fragments of the original photograph, manipulated through Williams' own agency, where she zoomed into images of his hands tied up, the accused, burns on his back, the blowtorch, and his torso locked and chained to a tree, the padlock. On top of these photos, Williams layered a found wooden window frame. The window acts as a historical lens and metaphorical frame into viewing or witnessing the past, at a time when the ritual act of lynching was dominantly accepted as entertainment. By layering these photographs with a window frame, Williams records the lineage of the injustices and deficiencies of Euro-white supremacist law. The window frame visually cuts through the photographs like prison bars, thereby placing the act of lynching behind bars and criminalizing this act, constructing a new legal precedent. By scrawling rhetorical questions around these centered images, Williams forces the implicated viewer to actively question the nature of the law. She applies the legal act of interrogation onto the photographer of the original photograph by repeatedly scrawling questions like, who took this picture? By surrounding the photographs with text, she draws attention away from the horrors of the photo and centers on words like black, who, why, and how. Bringing the photograph into the present moment, Williams leaves the reader with, somebody do something, calling for an active and engaged future. Williams amplifies the interrogation of the lynching rather than the lynching itself. The white text written on the black tar paper visually constructs a chalkboard through our shared conceptual maps. Filling the chalkboard with these interrogations of historical memories, Williams constructs a liberated classroom setting where children specifically have the space to witness and interrogate Can historical it's truths. Constructed, please. Our classroom. We revisit the past. The students examine the facts. In conversation with these same ideas over 20 years later, Weems uses the more technologically and aesthetically advanced medium of video to further construct children as active interrogators. Here, Weems uses a classroom setting filled with children staring out of two identical windows. The bright stage lights shining into the classroom highlight the artificial and theatrical nature of historical constructions of memory and what is legally deemed and legitimized as truth. Focusing on these unidentified children with their backs turned away from the camera, Weems constructs children as desiring historical information outside of the hegemonic classroom space. These children become the active interrogators of his constructed knowledge through the use of the window as a visual tool. These children, uniformed in the same black berets as the Black Panther Party, are agents of change, critically interrogating and bearing witness to the past in order to construct an empowered future. Here, a woman in winter stands gazing and reflecting within a constructed visual geography outside of the classroom windows. This woman is liberated from the classroom setting, looking through and beyond the other side of the open windows, acting as a spectator of her own truths, questioning and interrogating historical constructions of collective memory. If you look closely through the corridors of time, even within the horror, one could see the fluttering wings of doves, wings like time batting out beats of hope. The visual tool of the window frame provides what Weems called the corridors of time. Once opened, these windows or corridors provide a glimpse into the past. The viewer becomes the witness to histories veiled through the weaponized canons of academia, a witness to truths hidden in plain sight. Through the peeling away of historical layers, witnesses constitute agents of change. The use of the window and the iconography of the classroom in these works by women artists of the African diaspora 
constructs active spectatorship as a way to investigate and imagine a future of liberation.